Hello everyone, this is Ron from MyTech Legion and there is a considerable gap between the GTX 650 Ti and the GTX 660 not just in terms of price but also in terms of performance as of release of this video the price of the GTX 650 Ti vanilla is around $150 or $149 on some details would say while the GTX 660 will be $199 or $200 well uh, that is still a considerable gap uh, and that is filled right now with, uh, in terms of the NVIDIA camp rather, uh, it is filled with the overclocked version of GTX 650 Ti. Both, of course, GTX 650 Ti and GTX 660 are based on the GK106 core. And uh, the full implementation that GTX 660 enjoys, uh, was it, let me just count there quickly, 980 CUDA cores, while the GTX 650 Ti has 192 less, so that will make it 768 CUDA cores. Uh, what they have done is they have taken the same core, uh, chopped up the uh, the CUDA cores again, uh, less 100, 192 less CUDA cores, essentially, and either down by a cluster or uh, one one less SMX module. Same with the 650 Ti. But what they have done is they have enabled full ROPS and full memory, so two gigabytes, and also they have added the boost the GPU boost functionality enjoyed by higher end cards and what you get is the NVIDIA GeForce GTX 650 Ti boost video card and it will slot right in there and uh, actually they are also planning on releasing one gigabyte versions to, to kind of uh, beef up that segment uh, from $150 all the way to $200 and compete with AMD's offering which is uh, at that point will be the newly released 7790, the 7770 although that will be a lot lower and by by, uh, by the time it's released and also the 7850 uh, no, I believe they're facing the 7851 GB soon but so it's time for NVIDIA to step into that segment well anyway uh, of course EVGA being the uh, premier uh, Partner by uh, of Nvidia as uh, is also releasing their version, their super clocked version. Of course, factory overclocked. Uh, the default clock speed is similar to the GTX 660 at 980 megahertz, uh, but uh, with the super clock version from EVGA adds 93 megahertz more. So that is quite significant from the beginning. That is already more than a gigahertz plus with a boost that pushes it further. And of course. Uh, we'll try out the overclockability later and see how much further we can push it. At, uh, of course, for now, let's take a look at what we can find inside the package and see how well it performs after that. Inside each G4 GTX 650 Ti Boost Super Clock video card is, of course, the card itself. As double packaging, you have a padding of uh, bubble wrap, and inside that is an anti static bag containing the card itself. As for the accessories, you get an adapter for 6 pin PCIe from two Molex connectors. Also get a VGA adapter, a DVI connector. Uh, this is only, of course, compatible with the uh, DVI I connector. The DVI D connector is a digital only connector, so it is not uh, compatible with this adapter. And we have also the documentation. Make sure nothing is left inside the box. You have the documentation for the graphics this guy here. Uh, it is multilingual. You also get a badge for your case. It has the same carbon fiber design there and uh, the metallic. And it has the driver disc containing the drivers for Windows 8, 7, Vista, and XP. Uh, operating systems and also contains the uh, Precision X software. So you get these two sheets of information telling you about PCIe Express 3.0 and the power connector options. And of course the quick start guide for those who uh, don't want to, to read the full manual is also multilingual.
The EVGA GeForce GTX 650Ti Boost Superclocked Edition video card uses the reference NVIDIA PCB. As you can see there, it has a single 6-pin connector in front, and it has the blower-style fan of the reference cooler. But the shroud itself is slightly different and more attractive in design. Here you have uh, essentially a, uh, a brushed aluminum kind of applique right on the side. Same with the trim here on the top, while there is a carbon fiber uh, texture right here on the main body. And uh, also, see that the PCB itself is shorter, that we've seen with the 650Ti. And also you get something new for the 650Ti, an SLI connector enabling for uh, dual SLI connectivity, similar to the GTX 660 course should gain you some considerable performance uh, when you run it and also uh, here in the front you have a closed area right here there is no area here for the air to enter except here for the blower end of bottom and also here at the rear you get the EVGA high airflow rear bracket which has larger exhaust holes and you have these plugged connectors. Let me just remove them one by one. Show you the display port connector and the HDMI connector. These are, of course, full-sized connectors. And you also get the two dual-link DVI connectors. And they are labeled with a digital connector colored with a white plug. And these can be a bit snug since it's the first time you're opening them. And also the DVI connector directly underneath that. For those wondering about the measurements, uh, it uh, measures 24 centimeters long and 9.6 centimeters wide and should fit most mid tower cases. What you do now is, of course, plug it into our test system and see how well it performs, how well it stacks up compared to the GTX 650 Ti and the GeForce GTX 660 as well as the newly released AMD HD 7790 video card. Alright, there you have it. You've seen the performance that the GTX 650Ti Boost Super Clock Edition is quite the performer and uh, it is a lot closer to the GTX 660 performance compared to the GTX 650Ti and it definitely left the 7770 way behind which it should because that is essentially a $130 card compared to a $179 card and even the newly released HD7790 is far behind there. Uh, e uh, NVIDIA is actually going to be releasing variants of these ones. They're, they're, this is a 2 gigabyte model, but they will also create 1 gigabyte model, which will fill in that price gap. And also the, uh, the fact that it has boost, uh, which is a, a good benefit for overclocking. And also, uh, as you saw, I got plus 63. If you click on my uh, on the link below, I, I did an overclocking video using a precision X and I, I got uh, plus 63 on a core on top of the uh, already plus 93 on the core that, uh, that uh, EVGA included in there with a super clock version. So that's quite a significant uh, move forward and leap. And 
if you all if you saw the video from my overclocking you also saw the fact that there was some issue uh, encountered that issue of course is driver related it's not hardware related uh, and we contacted Nvidia about that uh, but uh, they said that they already actually are aware of it and they have the fix ready to go and they'll release it on the next driver release so for those who are wondering why they cannot uh, why, why, why their power limiter adjustment is inhibiting their overclock adjustment the fix is available soon uh, for those who are not aware of course just of, of what, what I'm talking about click on the link below there is an overclocking video that I did with the Precision X using the EVGA GTX 650Ti boost super clock edition video card and it shows you clearly what that is although despite that uh, without adjusting the power limiter I got plus 63 so that's quite good I wonder how much I could get well, with that uh, if I wasn't hitting the, the power limit uh, uh, power limit level at 100 well, either, way, either way you have the uh, performance there for $179 uh, that is quite decent and uh, even more enticing is the fact that there is an SLI connector in this end meaning of course that you can run SLI and uh, for the for $179 times 2 you get essentially what 360 bucks that is uh, essentially a GTX 670 and this will definitely outperform a GTX 670 when paired up uh, and uh, might even outperform GTX 680 I'm not sure I, haven't, I don't have a GTX 680 on hand so I don't, I'm not sure that uh, I can't get on top of my head how just how much raw power that ha that has if this uh, SLI is can beat of course Reviews for it will come out uh, will come out soon. Uh, you'll see people SLIing it and seeing how well it performs. Other than that, the EVGA specific advantages, of course, of the super clock is the fact that uh, you have the high airflow bracket and you get the EVGA customer support, which is pretty much unparalleled. Uh, not only do they provide uh, advanced RMA, they also provide step-up options and, of course, extended warranty that you can purchase. Now these are available by registering within 90 days, 90 days, and then of course uh, the, there's another one for I, I believe advanced RMA is only for for 30 within 30 day registration with the invoice, and the other two are for registering within 90 days. But registration is actually not mandatory anymore for EVGA warranty. Uh, even if you lose your receipt, I believe they cover the three year warranty standard. Uh, they would they would grab it from the uh, the serial number. Uh, they they get the data received. Uh, the the date it shipped out from their uh, offices from that number so uh, that is a good uh, thing to have uh, for warranty without the requiring registration and also the fact that uh, yeah, that they they're committed to that level of service and uh, let's see here what else can we say about the GTX 650 Ti Boost of course it will be interesting to see how well it uh, landscape shapes up uh, I. I heard that AMD is kind of phasing out their one gigabyte 7850, so they might be moving the 7850 two gigabyte down, and it will probably compete with these. But uh, we'll see how the how how it all shakes up. Uh, but right now, the GX650 Ti Boost, a very good product, and also for the the super clock version of the EVGA uh, GTX650 Ti Boost, uh, you have of course the reference clock, or uh, rather the reference cooler. Now normally I I'm not really fond of the blower style coolers since they run louder than usual it is loud only if you go beyond 60 percent but 50 percent is still tolerable and uh, as you saw in my temperature benchmarks that the uh, under load without overclocking it was it was just basically peaking at 50 percent so it was still inaudible and with uh, something i was really surprised with but not really because the G gk106 uh, doesn't doesn't really run hot uh, compared to the previous generation Fermi and the, of course, the Fermi before that. I'm not talking the 500 series, but the 400 series, which are notoriously hot. So, uh, with the even with the blower stock cooler and, of course, paired up with the high airflow bracket, it did very well in terms of cooling and uh, keeping the acoustics lower. Of course, when you overclock it, you have to keep the temperature within uh, not exceeding 70 degrees, so you're not being uh, you still have that headroom for the GPU boost to work so you would have to use the custom uh, fan setting and uh, kind of have to ramp this up further it only goes up to 75 percent but it is very noticeable once you reach 60 percent or higher uh, but other than that uh, I saw with the benchmarks the results speak for themselves it's an interesting product and it definitely deserves the high-tech legion gold award 
And this is Ron I'm signing out. You can read the rest of the review by clicking on the link below for my written review. Also, leave questions or comments below. You can click again on the description below to see the video of my overclocking uh, with the Precision X software bundled with the GeForce GTX 650 Ti Boost Superclock Edition, quite a mouthful, uh, from EVGA. And also uh, visit us on Facebook, facebook.com slash hdlreviews. Tweet at us at uh, twitter.com slash hightechlegion and visit our forums and uh, discuss this subject. All right, this is Ron once again signing out.